Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Benjamin Carano, and for those of you who don't know me yet, I craft cool things, make some pretty cool inventions, and I'm also a musician, so I write my own music and perform covers of other songs, as well as just sharing some inspiration with every one of you. So if any of that sounds interesting, consider subscribing, and with that, let's get into this video. So for those of you who remember me from before and have watched my previous videos, you might remember the motorized bicycle that I built about a year ago and I've ridden it a lot since then so I figured I'd do a video on all the problems that have gone wrong with it and everything I've done to go about fixing them uh, because I've not found a really good video on YouTube that shows you how to fix a motorized bicycle engine specifically so I'm going to show you pretty much everything that can go wrong with those small two-stroke engines and how to fix it as well as some other general things that have uh, been problems on the bike itself for those of you who remember the bike and want to see how it's doing after a year so stay tuned for the rest of the video. So starting with the bike itself, the first thing I noticed was the throttle assembly. Um, so first of all, the throttle has a lot of give in it. Um, and this is as far out as I can adjust all the adjustments both down here and at the carburetor down there. Um, so I'm not so pleased with how much give in the throttle. Um, you can see the throttle handle just turning as I uh, push this thing in and out, which means that it kind of just, it's not very tight in there. And then it also moves back and forth here. Uh, you can see that little gap opening and closing there. So I oiled a bunch in there so like it runs real smooth, but it's just really crappy quality. Um, so I have seen other videos about how to upgrade it to a uh, motorcycle throttle grip. So that's what I might end up doing in the future. Uh, other than that, it still runs the bike. It still accelerates, but it's just pretty crappy quality, the throttle cable that they give you with the bike kits. So that's the first thing I noticed. Another thing that came up after about a year of riding it is that all the oil that uh, comes and drips down the side of the uh, frame tank here whenever I put gas into it or whatever, go over bumps or something, there's just the tiniest bit of oil that comes out here as well as oil that splatters from the engine. Um, it actually eats right through the rubber that surrounds the uh, cable for the throttle up here. So you can see here that it's just the spring steel wrappings here. Uh, it's eaten all the rubber right off that cable uh, in here and it did that at the other one of these joints as well. So uh, that needs to be replaced every year or so, uh, knowing how much these little two strokes just leak oil like crazy. Um, and I did get it to uh, not leak so much oil. I replaced some of the gaskets and things. Um, but anyway, just that gas and oil, it really eats at this uh, throttle cable rubber for uh, for some reason. So anyway, so that needs to re be replaced once a year. And other than that, it's been working fine. It still works with just the spring steel wrappings, but uh, that's another thing that came up. Pretty minor problem, but still there. Now, I think the last thing that has been uh, problematic with the bike itself before we move on to the engine are uh, the chains on both sides. Um, so this chain, as I've been riding it a lot, has uh, stretched out quite a bit as you can see and I need to put a chain tensioner arm. Uh, they have chain tensioner arms that mount right onto this little uh, bolt hole right here. So that'll kind of keep that a little tight. It used to be the perfect length and nice and tight but now it's stretched out quite a bit so sometimes that's fallen off. Um, as well as the chain on the other side which uh, gets loose pretty quick. Uh, because it's this really crappy uh, chain tension arm that they give with the stock bike kits. Um, so I'm going to be upgrading that to a spring tensioner arm uh, so that it's always holding tension on the arm. I don't have to keep adjusting this bolt and just having the threads on the bolt just strip from trying to put it so tight um, to get this chain to be really tight. Uh, but other than that, the uh, sprocket assembly that I did here with bolting the sprocket to the disc brake hub rather than the spokes with the stock kit has been working absolutely amazing. Uh, that's been really strong. No spokes have ripped out. This bike has been really well with two people for a year. The frame has been holding it. Um, so all that has been really great uh, design there. But yeah, just the chain tensioner arms that I need to get for those uh, chains is the next thing I'll need to upgrade on the bike itself. So now let's move on to the engine. Okay, so here I have the two-stroke engine. I've taken it off the bike, taken some of the covers off to make it easier to see what I'm doing here. 
Um, so the first thing I'm going to talk about uh, that can be problematic is the magneto loop set and the CDI ignition coil. So the magneto loop set is right inside uh, this cover here. Um, you can see this right here is the magnet. Um, and that's what it looks like up close. Um, it's just a little magnet. It's got a little key slot in it. Um, and then the magnets on both sides. So basically that magnet, uh, one of the myths that can happen, um, something that can happen that can make your engine problematic is the spark plug not firing. And that can either be a bad spark plug, which you need to check and make sure the gapping is proper and make sure your spark plug is good. Um, but it can also be a problem with the magneto loop set or the CDI ignition coil. Um, and with the magneto loop set, one of the things that people say is that this little gap in between the magnet and the uh, loop around it uh, should be about a credit card width. And that's it's true to some extent, but the gap is not going to matter too much. Uh, what matters more with this magnet in here is uh, I'll show you a close up of this magnet uh, that I have actually replaced. This was the one that was in here before, and this is the new one. Um, what sometimes can happen with these magnets is they're more magnetic on one side. You can see that screwdriver really sticks to it. And on the other side, they're really not very magnetic. So that can be a big problem with these magnets is that they lose their uh, capacity to create a strong spark because for some reason they get less magnetic over time. I don't know why, but this one has equal um, uh, magnetism on both sides so that that creates a strong spark. So I did replace that. Um, it's not super crucial. It's not going to affect it much, but it can affect uh, the performance of the spark a little bit. Um, and now moving on to the CDI. Um, these can actually go bad maybe every two years or so. Mine went bad sooner than that. Um, but I found that really the high performance one versus the regular one, uh, it's not too, mu too much of a difference. So uh, you can use either CDI. There's one with a blue, blue wire here instead of the red. That's the regular ones. Um, but anyway, the, the little uh, electronic bits in here can go bad over time and just create a very weak spark. So uh, this, as well as the magneto loop set, are things to check when looking for problems with your bike um, because the spark is basically one of the three very important things to getting an engine to run properly. You need fuel, you need air, and you need spark. Uh, so with the air part of it, uh, let's talk about the carburetors now. So there are two main carburetors that you'll find uh, when you're building a bike or purchasing a bike kit and there's your standard stock carburetor um, which looks something like this and it comes on most of the cheaper bike engine kits. Um, just a simple little choke there, air filter, uh, air comes in down there, a um, little float in there and then the little intake where it bolts onto the engine. Uh, and then you'll have the high performance carburetor uh, which is the one I used right here uh, that has an automatic choke release when you rev the throttle. Um, overall, it's just better quality, better air filter, um, high, uh, wider intake, so it's more air in, uh, making it high, higher performance, um, and then a much smoother throttle. So, in talking about the problems that go wrong with these carburetors, uh, the most common thing is your air and fuel mixture. Remember, air, fuel, and spark, those are the biggest things for an engine to run. So, air and fuel is a really important, and uh, these carburetors, the higher performance ones, work by fuel jets. Uh, which are down right above the float here. Um, and then these uh, lower performance carburetors uh, have a needle adjustment for the fuel. So I'm going to take these both apart and show you what you need to do to adjust them uh, to get the right fuel and air mixture based on the environment that you're riding in to make your engine uh, have optimal performance. Um, so to disassemble the higher performance carburetors, there are two uh, star nut screws right here on the very bottom that we'll have to take out to access the jets. And then on this one, it's pretty similar, but it's just two regular uh, Phillips head there, and then on the other side of the carburetor that we'll have to take out. So let me go ahead and disassemble these carburetors and uh, get inside to do some adjustments. Alright, so that is it for the disassembly process, and you can see here the float on this one has a little hinge in there, uh, so basically what the float does is when the gasoline in the bowl uh, reaches a certain height, the float will float on top of it and close a little valve here, 
uh, behind it that makes sure you don't over flood your engine with fuel. Um, and then the float on the regular performance carburetor uh, is basically just a, a standard little float here. You can actually just take it out like that um, and it's not on a little hinge as part of the carburetor. Um, so when we talk about the floats, uh, a common problem, a very common problem to check before fuel and jetting and any of that uh, is the actual float itself. Sometimes, because these floats can be made uh, just in China in, a, in some factory, they're not really tested uh, before they're shipped, uh, they can have a small crack in them somewhere. And I actually had a case of that. You can see this float right here, how it's really bluish on the inside. That's because it's full of gasoline and oil, because there's a small crack on the inside of that hole that allowed all the fuel and gasoline to get inside of it, which is obviously not going to allow it to float. So it sunk to the bottom of the bowl and never closed off that uh, valve in there. And I was flooding my engine, running it insanely rich. So it just stalled out and wouldn't start up. And that was basically my problem. I had to order a new float, but the floats are kind of hard to find sometimes. So sometimes with these lower performance carburetors, it's just worth it to buy a whole nother carburetor. They're only like 11 bucks on Amazon. Uh, so yeah, checking the floats for any leaks is definitely uh, the first thing. And then in terms of the fuel adjustments, uh, you can see on this carburetor, this is the jet right here. I have a 61 millimeter jet. I don't know if you can see that, the uh, focus is kind of bad right now, but uh, it's a 61 millimeter and basically the size uh, is, base is very important on the environment you're riding it in. If you're at lower altitude and it's colder, you're going to want to have a bigger size jet, probably something like a 78 millimeter. If you're at higher altitude and it's often warmer weather when you're riding your bike, you're going to want to have a smaller size jet because the air is less condensed um, and it's it's uh, because you're at higher altitude and it's also hotter, uh, so it's also less condensed because when it's colder it's more condensed. So uh, you're going to want a smaller jet hole because you're going to let too much fuel in based on how much air you're letting in if the air is less condensed. Um, so these range every single millimeter. So you can go from 61, I think is the smallest I was able to find because I'm at pretty high altitude and pretty warm weather, um, all the way up to like, yeah, 78 or an 81. Um, and you can basically order these uh, just little packets of all these different jet sizes to try out. And this packet was only like six bucks. I bought it from Bikeberry, uh, the same company I bought the uh, two-stroke engine from. So again, these packets of jets will allow you to change that one out, and you can just change it out by taking a flathead screwdriver and basically just unscrewing the jet. It'll just unscrew right out of there, and you put a new one in and test it out, and hopefully it will work better. Uh, so that's all the adjustments that you'll need to worry about on this carburetor, and obviously uh, cleaning the air filter and the intake if they get clogged with uh, dirt or carbon buildup. Uh, it's important to keep these very clean. Um, and then for the fuel adjustment on the lower performance carburetor, uh, you basically just take this top part off, which just unscrews by hand, and then it will reveal a little spring in there when the throttle's off, and then also a uh, entire assembly inside there. So let me just take that out. There it is. Um, so this is the whole assembly which is in there. And how this works is this C-clip right here uh, will go in first. Um, or actually, sorry, this goes in second. So this is the needle adjustment right here. You can see it has a tiny little C-clip that goes on different notches um, here. And this little C-clip, moving it up will basically uh, uh, it will increase your fuel amount. Um, so you basically, if you have it on the very top notch, it will allow the most fuel to come in. And on the very bottom notch, it will allow the least amount of fuel to come in. So it's not as big of an adjustment as necessarily the jets because you can get lots of different sizes with the jets, but you can still play around with that C-clip and its placement on the needle. And then when you're done adjusting that, based on your environment, again, more fuel for colder air and lower altitudes, less fuel for hotter air and higher altitudes and just put that down through the little hole and then there is a bigger c-clip which just goes in right over that and then obviously the spring uh, will go in over that and then this will go in right there and that just slides down in the carburetor and screws together when you have your fuel air adjustment um, so those are the biggest adjustments with the carburetors um, i hope that helped uh, now i'll move on to the 
actual just engine body and some other additional things to check um, if none of this ends up working. So the first thing to make sure of on the engine are mostly compression and proper airflow throughout the entire engine. Um, so the first thing to check is usually I check the exhaust pipe uh, to make sure it is uh, flowing through. So I'll just take the exhaust pipe off and clean it out. You can just run a hose through it and then uh, run a hair dryer through it or just put it in the sun make sure it dries so that rust doesn't build up too fast on the inside of it but just make sure that the exhaust has an easy way of escaping as well as uh, unscrewing both the exhaust port and the carburetor port and just checking for any carbon buildup throughout all the ports to make sure everything flows really well. Um, you're also going to want to check the uh, gaskets and all the sealers uh, to make sure there's no major oil leaks. Um, because that also results in air leaks which will affect the compression of your engine and often a common leak can be uh, right under the magnets in here if you open up your magneto loop set cover and there's a bunch of oil in here that's not a good sign that means that this nut right here is not tight enough and you've got a leak under it uh, through the bearing there that is behind this magnet so make sure that nut is good and tight um, as well as on the gear side of the engine here I don't have it opened up but the gears are right behind here you want to make sure those are tight and not leaking a whole bunch of oil um, and then moving on to the uh, next thing the compression of the engine is the next really important thing to check um, so it should be between 90 and 120 psi on these little two-stroke engines for a good compression and you can just get a compression gauge and they'll uh, screw right into the hole for the spark plug and you basically just turn the pedals a couple times to get a couple uh, strokes on the engine and then the compression gauge will read a number uh, in psi so that needs to be between 90 and 120 and if your compression is bad that either means that you need to replace the piston rings that can be a common thing replacing the piston rings is really easy they're super cheap and yeah so just replacing the piston rings also this piston uh, surround here can sometimes go bad from warping over really hot temperatures um, as well as what we talked about before in terms of leaking uh, that can affect compression um, and then the next thing uh, now that we have the carburetor off from before um, I wanted to mention before you go diagnosing the carburetors and trying all these things and finding out that they don't work uh, what you can actually do to speed up the whole process of fixing the engine is you can get starting fluid so this is just max starting fluid it's basically a mixture of uh, fuel and air uh, in a spray can and you'll just put like three little squirts uh, right into the little uh, carburetor intake port without the carburetor on and then that should be enough to start up the engine once the engine is started then you just spray this into here and if the engine runs really well with this this should basically act like a turbocharger or something the engine will love this so if it runs well on this um, then basically you know that it's a carburetor problem if the engine was not running well before you put this in that means it's a carburetor problem so that's an easy way to check if your carburetor is failing is by just uh, spraying some of this into the intake and making sure the engine runs and if it runs really well with this then that means you got a carburetor problem. So that is mostly all I have to say for diagnosing the engine. Um, sometimes these engines can just go bad period and it's just not even worth it to fix them for all the things you have to do because they are pretty cheaply made. It's not the best. Uh, yes, well you can get some better quality engine kit designs with like high compression heads, better exhaust, better quality carburetor. The stock engine part is most likely always going to be the same. Made by one same company, one same manufacturer that just makes all these really cheap engine stock parts. Uh, which are just not so great. You can even see it was just uh, all these screws were just torqued in with like a screw gun They're all like, stripped out. It's just not the best quality So sometimes these engines will just need to be replaced and they don't last very long um, I personally don't really like this engine design as a two-stroke engine I have a few other two strokes that I might do uh, some videos about in the future that I actually do really like uh, for a cheap two-stroke option, but anyway, that's it for the uh, diagnosing of the engine and the carburetor so again fuel air and spark biggest things you got to look for in making sure an engine runs properly all right guys so that's it on my video for uh, problems that can go wrong with small two-stroke engines and motorized bicycles and a quick update on the bike that I actually built a while ago for those of you who uh, saw those previous videos and if any of these things helped you out uh, like comment subscribe 
And if you have any other suggestions or things you have done uh, to diagnose your bicycle or two-stroke engine, post them in the comments below. I'd love for this to be a great video with good comments on everything that can go wrong with these motorized bicycles and how to fix them. Uh, because again, when I was looking for ways to fix mine, I didn't find many very good videos. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys, and I will see you in the next one.